Okay, hello. We're going to talk about uh, data for a discrete data set, and what we're going to talk about in general is finding domain and the range. So, domain and range, again, by definition, is domain is the set of all x values that your function or that your data is covering, and the range is considered to be all the output values that your data or set of functions uh, cover. So, it's very simple. There's some very basic ideas to it. It's something you just have to commit to memory. There's no, uh, you know, process to follow other than the fact that you just have to commit those ideas to memory. So, domain. There's a couple things you want to keep in mind with domain, and domain is normally just written from least to greatest in order, and you have some s simple notation with it. So you want to put it in some sort of brackets, or you want to put it in some sort of parentheses. So in my case, I'm just going to put it in brackets. And what I'm going to look at is all the x values of my data. Now this is called discrete data. Discrete data is different from continuous data. And discrete data is basically looking at very specific points. Okay? I've given you 0, 5. I've given you 4, 3. I've given you 2, 1. I've given the point negative 5, 4. And we've got the other, other coordinate, negative 1, 2. I am not talking about any other numbers or sets of data other than what is given. So I have to be very specific in my domain. And the only way for me to be specific is by me actually just listing out those values in least to greatest. So it's kind of just taking the numbers, reorganizing them, and writing. So here we go. Domain. I write it from least to greatest. My smallest number is negative 5. So I'm going to put it in a bracket. So I get negative 5. And then I'm going to look for my next smallest number, which is negative 1. So negative 1. The next number is 0 here. So I put 0. And then the next number I find is 2. So I'm writing comma 2. And then last but least, the greatest x value is 4. So literally what I've done for the domain is literally just listed out the x coordinates of my set of data from least to greatest. Range. The range is going to be the same exact thing, except it's going to be the y-coordinates. So all I'm doing is looking at the y-coordinates and writing them from least to greatest. Now one thing I do want to keep in mind that I didn't talk about earlier is the fact that if there were to be repeats, I would not write the repeats. So in this case, I look up here, I've got 5, 3, 1, 4, and 2, and I'm pointing to my y-coordinates. I don't have to worry about repeats because there are none, so I'm just going to reorganize these numbers and put them from least to greatest. Again, I'm not concerned with, you know, the fact that they're matched together at this point because I just want to know what values am I covering in my vertical change. So I've got the range. And the range, I'm just going to put another bracket, and I'm just going to go list them from least to greatest. I see I've got 5, 3, 1, 4, and 2. So the smallest number is 1. The next is 2. Following from that is 3 then 4, then 5. And that, folks, right there is just domain range. Now, there's one other topic we can discuss, and we can discuss, is this a function? By definition, a function is a um, set of data in which your x value does not have any repeats that have a different y output. Basically meaning, if you have two x values, and their y values are different, then it's not a function. So in this case, we take a look up here. 0, 4, 2, negative 5, negative 1. I can't prove that it's not a function, so I just have to assume that it is a function. So this answer here for is it a function is yes. And that's it. So thank you for tuning in. I hope that helped for determining your data from a discrete set.